Hello, I am Squid of Love. Welcome back to another look at the rich and very interesting lore of Star Citizen. We have taken a look at the alien races that exist within the Star Citizen universe already, so it is only logical to discuss humanity today and more specifically the UE and how it was formed. This will help us understand better the human society but also potential threats and opportunities that we may encounter in the future. The UE, the United Empire of Earth right now is a democratic empire with an elective and term limited imperator. But it wasn't always like this, the first form of humanity's government was the United Nations of Earth, the UNE, that lasted from 2380 to 2523. It was back then when humanity began to expand into the stars and colonizing new planets and new systems that the governments of Earth realized they will not be able to maintain themselves in the bright future ahead. In 2380 they decided to put aside their social and political differences and unify as a single governing entity named the UNE. Over the next century more and more people began to move offward and start over on freshly terraform worlds. By the 26th century almost 70% of the human population lived on other planets in other systems and those living off-world started feeling like they were not being equally represented in the government and began to petition the UNE for reform. Something that finally happened in 2523 when the UNE transformed itself into the United Planets of Earth, the UPE that lasted from 2523 until 2546. This new political structure introduced the Tribunal of the High Secretary, responsible for maintaining infrastructure, High General responsible for expansion and protection, and High Advocate responsible for law enforcement at the top of the pyramid and a Senate composed of delegates representing all of the human planets around the galaxy. The first real test for the UP was the first war between human and Tevarin from 2543 until 2546. Shortly after the discovery of the Tevarin, this proud warlike martial race attacked humanity and started pushing inside UP territory. Despite the fact that the Tevarin lacked technologically, they caused many problems thanks to their strategic brilliance and endurance. This first human Tevarin war basically ended with the decisive battle of Idris IV where a young officer named Ivar Messer would distinguish himself in the battlefield and later save the future of humanity. Messer eventually managed to turn his fame into a political career and quickly became a high general. He was always critical of the tribunal system and he started talking of the need to create a prime citizen position, a person that could take decisions fast and deal with emergencies without hesitation. He managed not only create such a position, but also be the first to be elected as a prime citizen. Shortly after his election as a prime citizen, he restructured the government into the new United Empire of Earth and he became an imperator. This new era of humanity, the UE Messer era, lasted from 2546 until 2792. The colony with the Tevarin wasn't over though, humanity had to fight a second Tevarin human war that took place in 2603 until 2610 as the United Empire of Earth this time. The second war ended again with the victory of the humans after the decisive battle of Centauri on June 24, 2610 and the remaining Tevarin forces deciding to suicide to die above Elysium for their former homeworld which has been their goal to recapture their former homeworld instead of surrendering to the UE forces. Humanity had emerged victorious from their first intergalactic conflict but this second war with the Tevarin was anything but a blessing and this is because it only made Messer more powerful. For the rest couple centuries the UE expanded into the universe and the Messer's power and title transferred down through his children it's more cruel and greedy than the last. It was basically a regime, a time of military oppression and they were using the Xi'an but also the Vandul as threats to terrorize the populace and establish their power. It wasn't until the massacre of Garon II that the resistance really sparked a public outcry and changed everything. Garon II was a small planet brimming with life that was sold to a terraforming company by the Imperator of that time. 
on the planet was living a developing species that was casually exterminated in the process of terraforming and that atrocity ultimately ignited the downfall of the Messers. As a result, the last Imperator, the last Messer Imperator was overthrown on May 3rd, 2792. Something worth mentioning is the fact that the Sian are suspected to have helped in the overthrow of the last Messer Imperator. It was 2792 when the UAE took its present form and the democratic era of humanity started. Erin Toy became the new Imperator and restored the tribunal system and the Imperator was now in an elected position with a 10-year term limit. Something very important regarding the human society is the difference between civilians and citizens. Everybody is born a civilian but citizens are chosen members of the society. It is a status that has to be earned and this can happen only through distinguished military service, community service or application which is the least successful method. It is not easy to become a citizen and it gives prestige to the owner of the title. The military of the UE is divided in two main branches, the army and the navy. The army of the UE consists mostly of planetary defense force garrisons who keep the peace and order of the expanding Empire star systems. It also takes part in massive civil and construction projects in an effort to expand human civilization. It coordinates military engagements with the Navy, but for the most part operate within their own realm. The Army can provide a good starting career for citizens in the vast empire as well as proving a means of citizenship. The Navy now it is undoubtedly the most important branch of the military and it is tasked with exploration, colonization, peacekeeping and expansion of the UE. A sizable force ready to face engagement with any would-be invaders and lawbreakers in every corner of the empire. The navy of the UE consists of hundreds of fleets and tens of thousands of starships. The advocacy is an elite police force that can handle crimes, extraordinary crimes and hunt down notorious criminals but also undertake covered operations in order to capture fugitives in alien territory. As we have mentioned before, the Senate is composed of delegates representing all of the human planets around the galaxy. When a planet reaches a certain population size or ascends to a certain level of influence, it can petition for recognition by the government. If successful, the planet then is allowed to elect their own representative in the Senate of Earth. A senator serves for five years and can serve multiple terms. As of 2943, there are 37 star systems in the UE territory and some of these systems worth mentioning include of course the solar system and Earth which is the heart of the empire, home to the Imperator and the UE Senate, Earth sets the standards for everything that happens in the empire. The planet though is stripped of its natural resources and it is heavily dependent on imports from other systems. Sol is considered the safest system of the Empire with strong navy presence and several banger carriers around ready to take action. It is also the system with the first ever terraform planet, Mars. Terra on the other hand is the shining jewel and cultural focus of the Empire antagonizing Earth in importance and has a very strong influence in everything that has to do with the UE. It is home to the transitionalist political movement who believe that Terra better represents the future of the UE than the current capital Earth does. Another system worth mentioning is Crosso, which is the first system discovered by humanity and includes Angeli, the first planet terraform outside of the Sol system. It was the combined effort of the nations of Earth to expand in the system, in the Crosso system, that led to the creation of the UNE. As for the diplomatic relations of the UE with the alien races of the star citizen universe, humans are friendly and trading with the Banyu, they are neutral with the Sian and their relationships have been better after the overthrow of the Messer regime, they are also trading with the Sian and extremely hostile with the Vandul. There has been absolutely no communication with any Vandul clan so far and the only interaction with them has been through combat. Humanity has no relationship yet with the Karthark and they are debating whether or not they should approach the Karthark because they simply don't want to risk relations with the Sian which have proclaimed the Karthark as their enemies. 
This is the UE in the present, this is the UE in the Star Citizen universe, the society in which we will have to operate with our characters, an empire divided with two strong systems competing for power and trying to control the UE, with civil tensions rising across its territory and the Vandul raiding UE control systems. The future of the UE might not seem that bright, but it will definitely be full of opportunities for us. Thank you very much for joining me, if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more, I am Squid of Love and I will see you around the verse, bye bye.